Well, I'm going to talk about how I think the culture is going to become omniscient collectively in a few short years. Mining and mapping omniscience. But before I get to that light topic, a couple of definitions uh, are in order. So I do actually make the physical stuff that the cloud runs on. And I want to apologize for the technology industry for calling it the cloud. When I think of a cloud, I think of something that's beautiful, sometimes ominous, floating in space very quietly. In reality, the cloud is a bunch of servers made out of metal and plastic that run on electricity 24 hours a day, spew heat out the back of them, and make a ton of racket so you can barely stand to be in the building. But we do this so that anytime you want to buy something online, anytime you want to watch a movie, anytime you want to do anything, it's available. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. OK, so that was my definition phase. Now getting back to the omniscience piece. In order to have collective solutions to giant problems, we need to transform the way that we look at resources. And there's a couple of elements to resource mining and mapping that are essential to actually making changes that happen in the real world. Because making changes in the virtual world is uh, virtual but uninteresting. Making changes in the real world actually changes the arc of history. And that's much more interesting. So there's a couple of elements to it. The first one is networking. And one of the reasons I'm optimistic about our, our chances is that if you look at kind of human evolution, three stages of human evolution, 2.2 million years. I could be off by a half a million years or so, and it actually doesn't change my point. So I'll just leave it at 2.2 million years. A fair amount of time. And we think of time that way very linear. We think of it sitting on a line. It starts here, and it goes always to the right for those of us in the West. For those of you who are not familiar with World of Warcraft, it's a massive multiplayer online game where you blow stuff up. Lots of fun. The collective number of hours that we humans have spent since 2004 playing World of Warcraft is 5.9 million years. We know how to work collectively on things that we care about. <laughs> and clearly, we care about blowing stuff up. The other part of my job is solving problems for big companies who are trying to figure out how to store all of the data that you shove up into the cloud. And there's a few things that I've noticed about this data that it, it makes it quickly become a resource. But first of all, it is persistent. It never goes away. If you think it's going to go away, you're wrong. It's stored in three different places. It's locked up different ways. It can be replicated overnight. It can be restored if a data center blows up, if there's an earthquake. It, when you upload that picture before you hit send, you should be sure, because it's never going to go away. Now, that's the positive part of that is that before long, every book ever written, every picture ever painted, every song ever composed, every poem ever written, ever, it will all be in a data center someplace, on a hard drive, in a server, hopefully one that I made. <laughs> the data is accessible, but depends on the culture a little bit. So you, you, I, this is not in all caps yet, because depending on where you live in the world and what your economic status is, your accessibility varies, though it is quickly becoming a global situation where, for the first time in, uh, in history, one of, the, one of the most oppressive and closed off dictatorships in the, in the world had to admit that they made a mistake because a lot of their people have cell phones now. And so they can no longer just make stuff up. Revisionist history is becoming harder as accessibility improves. The data is framed. And what I mean by that is there's a portal. I, I was troubled last spring when the whole Arab Spring thing was going on, and there were questions about how social media helps the Arab Spring move forward. Let's just be clear. Let's, that's like giving credit to Paul Revere's horse for the message that Paul Revere was sell, is sending. Right? It's just a portal. It's just a way to communicate a message. But the passion behind it has to be human. And what I'm seeing is the frame is changing rapidly. The tools that enable us to mine data are improving every day. The ability for us to access more data in more ways is, is it's just evolution to revolution. Now, is it democratic? Not so much. Uh, a lot of the data that you upload to free sites is no longer yours once you upload it. It belongs to the company that is sponsoring the free site. That's why you get those very targeted and sometimes creepy ads on the right-hand side of your screen <laughs> that know how old you are and whether your hairline's receding or not and you know, what you've been looking at. 
All that to say this data is out there, and the amount of data that is added to the collection every day exceeds all of the data that was in the collection about 10 years ago. And so when you think about the scale, one thing you can do is just run for cover and say, oh my gosh, how can I ever deal with any of this? But another thing to think about is, what if there was a way for me to become a miner and a mapper? What if there were tools available so that I could actually extract this data? So imagine sitting down to solve a problem, a real problem in the real world. And as you do that, and as your team of people work together, you find that you have access to every person who has ever tried to solve that problem in the past, every book written about the topic, every song composed in protest of the topic or in support of the topic, every idea, pass or fail, and it all rolls up in a way that you can understand it and you can see it in context. Then imagine trying to solve the problem. I have this idea that I call interlutions. So we have these entertaining platforms that we, that we like. We like games. And what I'm seeing is a trend of taking that entertainment platform, taking that idea of, hey, this is fun to work on, but being able to solve any kind of problem, whether it's political, social, or economic, and whether it's a revolution, an evolution, or a solution, and moving that forward back into the real world. So what this requires, I think, is letting go of my idea, my invention, my business plan, my get-rich-quick scheme, and embracing our idea our solution, our collective ability to alter history because we collectively can approach omniscience, which is scary if it's done wrong and amazing if it's done right. Thank you.